On America's Test Kitchen, Chris Kimball and other test cooks solve everyday cooking problems, developing recipes that should work every time. They test home kitchen equipment and taste supermarket ingredients so you'll know what's best to buy. The complete America's Test Kitchen TV show cookbook published by America's Test Kitchen includes every recipe from the 10 years the show has been on the air. And I'm pleased to welcome Chris Kimball back to our show today to help answer your cooking questions and aid you in avoiding holiday meal calamities. Welcome back to our show. My pleasure. Thanks. I've been told that you can buy the cheapest red wine as long as it's dry and it'll be perfectly fine. There are some chefs who insist that uh, if you don't use a good red wine, then it's just not going to taste as good. Uh, we actually proved absolutely the cheapest wine for sangria was the best. We, we actually tried the thirty dollar bottle, the five dollar bottle. I think with red wine, we just put it in a sub simmer, reduce it down from a cup to a few tablespoons. Use a you know cheap Cote de Rhone, you know medium bodied, a little bit of fruit, not too tannic. Reduce it down, and it doesn't matter how expensive the wine is if you do that. Because once you cook it, and the yeah. alcohol is out, it's something else anyway, isn't it? It's, it's a like heating olive of, oil. You know, people buy a $30 liter olive oil. They put it in a pan to heat it up. Well, they could have used canola oil because all, all all of those volatiles are, have disappeared when you heat it up. So you're saying I can use canola instead of extra virgin olive oil when I'm if you heat it? garlic? Oh, yeah, I would never. <clears throat> in Italy, that's what they had, olive oil. So they used it for everything. They would splash it on food. They cook with it. Well, it was cheap. It was local. Here, if you buy a good extra virgin, you would never cook with it. I mean, you, you'd put it on food, use it in a salad dressing, et cetera, put it on fish when you've cooked it. But if you heat it up, all that money you spent just goes up in the air. Can you use it also instead of butter? Sure. I mean, yeah, I, well, if you use an inexpensive olive oil, fine. You could use it in, instead of butter, sure. Sometimes you want butter and olive oil because you want the browning properties of butter or the flavor. Uh, but I wouldn't spend 30 bucks on a bottle and then put that in a pan heat it up. You try out equipment and gadgets, and it seems like there's always some kind of new tool that's supposed to make cooking quicker and easier. How many of those gadgets are really necessary in the kitchen? Uh, 12%. This <laughs> is some really? small number. Well, the, the, <clears throat> here's the category. Stuff you really got to have. You got to be able to sharpen a knife, and a sharpening steel doesn't really do that. So you need a knife sharpener. <clears throat> you need a good knife. You need a garlic press. You need an You instant... need a garlic press? Can't you <clears throat> chop up garlic or um, smash it? Yeah, but most people find it much easier to use a garlic press, and if you press garlic, you get a much stronger garlic flavor because the cells are being crushed. Whereas if you mince it, uh, for example, you, you don't get as much garlic flavor, so it's easier for people. Uh, you need, as I said, a good instant read thermometer, and uh, you need a microplane zester for zest, et cetera. But, you know, do you need the electric pizza oven, or do you need the $200 toaster ovens, which are a total waste of money, or do you need the uh, silicone poaching pods? You know, well, no, you don't really need to have I was at Williams Sonoma a couple of years ago in San Francisco. They opened a, a new headquarters store. It's a lovely store, but I noticed on the wall or in the wall was a $7,000 wall-mounted gas grill. I, you know, I mean, really. I mean, so we, Julia Child did not have a $7,000 wall-mounted rotisserie gas grill in her wall. She didn't need it. Well, we in New York, we're working in rather cramped kitchens in most cases. Uh, your test kitchen is enormous with room for everything and a lot of people to move around at once. Uh, so uh, even even if we all have just the right amount of equipment, if two people want to cook sometimes, they can get in each other's way. Well, <clears throat> there was a couple of cookbooks out years ago about how the French cook in Paris. And if you looked at those little tiny kitchens, they have, as you said, it's just like New York, very small kitchens. And they don't have fancy cookware, and they, for the most part, turn out very good food. 